we have Aragon speaking. Um, we'll play uh, the video right now. I'm the co-founder of Aragon. And I'll be talking about how to supercharge online communities with crypto, or uh, as you may have heard from the crypto community, the AOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. So to provide some background on me, I got into crypto in 2011. Back there, it wasn't really crypto, it was just Bitcoin. And the thing that really caught me in is that we can really build new organizational structures that are much more equitable and all the playing field for everyone to enter. So my background is in software development, open source. I got started with my first open source project when I was 12, building a community around it. What really hooked me into crypto, as I was saying before, is this idea that anyone can create a community and anyone can create um, basically a decentralized organization or a movement. And it can actually become leaderless and it can actually lead a real change. And so, for example, you think about Bitcoin in 2008, so that's was there for a few years, but then he disappeared and the movement has continued and probably exceeded his wildest expectations. Um, and that is the whole idea behind decentralized autonomous organizations, the idea that you can actually have a set of rules, a set of, for example, code in the case of Bitcoin, and that code can then determine certain boundaries and then people can race behind that idea and then actually take it much further along. Aragon was born to actually make decentralized organizations widespread. Aragon was born after the DAO. The DAO is like this very famous hack that happened in which the one of the actually first decentralized organizations raised $150 million and then it all got stolen. So after that, DAOs had kind of a bad name, although the problem that there was back in the day was just like that specific implementation um, and not something like widespread in all DAOs. But even without that, they got kind of a bad name. But in 2016, Donald Trump won the US elections and that was kind of a wake up call for us, uh, for my co-founder and me, that the world needed better organizational tools, better tools to gather consensus, um, better tools to organize, better tools to actually improve our kind of like very ancient decision making systems, for example, democracy, who are kind of tampered with right now uh, by many institutions. And so, the first thing we're doing in that direction is focus on online communities. And so these online communities already exist out there. They are already movements. They um, already organize via the internet, but we can supercharge them with many of the crypto features we have right now. Because a lot of these communities, they talk a lot. They, uh, you know, they discuss and they share ideas, but they actually don't really take action. And so that's what we're trying to fix. So the idea with Aragon is that you can create a decentralized autonomous organization in five minutes. So basically you can see here some of the templates that we have, like from kind of a company template, which tries to replicate a normal company to like a membership in which like uh, each person has basically one, one vote, to reputation, which enables you to like have more like reputation weighted, fundraising, which enables um, organizations to actually raise money using a bonding curve model, and it's in a totally decentralized way and permissionless way, and it is so easy to create them. It's a very modular framework, so you have apps that you can basically like plug and play. Um, it's like DeFi has used the expression money Legos before, because um, you can like plug and play these like Lego pieces to create like very complex kind of puzzles. And what I would say Aragon is, is more like governance Legos. So basically you have like multiple apps and you can plug and play with them. So you can you can plug and play uh, like a voting app, you can change that with a new voting app, you can have um, different governance mechanisms, you can add like a fundraising app for your organization to fundraise. You can have a redemption app so everyone in your decentralized autonomous organization can withdraw proportional assets depending on their tokens. So basically you can like do a bunch of these things. Um, for everything else that doesn't have an app, you can use Aragon Agent, which is kind of the bridge to all the Ethereum apps. And so with that, you can interface with whatever app you want basically on the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, so you can like claim bounties on Gitcoin, or you can like uh, sell items on origin protocol or basically everything um, or even like you know create uh, vaults on maker or interact with any DeFi protocol the token that underpowers the network is called ant so aragon network token and so basically right now we have around 1.4k DAOs that are powered by aragon and uh, there are a couple interesting use cases that we're building for them so the whole premise of the aragon network is that these DAOs are gonna need some services that are basically very uncovered right now. So 
uh, they are very underserved. The couple of services we're building right now, I will talk um, about it later, is Aragon Court and Aragon Chain. Aragon Court helps these decentralized organizations solve disputes on chain, and Aragon Chain helps them run very efficiently. And um, I will talk about them later. The idea here is that for ANTs, like the kind of the parent asset, and so each of these services have their own kind of work token. And so the idea is that to, for example, you know, to be a, a user on Aragon Court, you actually need to have ANJ. To be a validator in Aragon Chain, you need ARA. And then ANT is the token that uh, is kind of a parent token and gets them together. So the primary use case is the network governance. Um, you may be familiar with governance tokens. And then the secondary use case is that they need to be staked as collateral to actually get those um, kind of secondary assets. So for example, in order to mint or issue new, new ANJ or ARA, you need to stake um, ANT. So there is this very interesting like Aragon economics post that a placeholder growth. Um, this particular one is wrote by Chris Morniski. And the way he looks at it is he looks at the Aragon network as a digital jurisdiction that empowers decentralized organizations. And then he conceptualizes um, governance as a store of value by looking at the seeds of the Senate in the, in the US. And so as the value of the US grows, obviously the value of these seeds um, actually really grows as well. So that is his look, and you can take a look at their uh, placeholder blog. They have an interesting primary on it, and also primary in general uh, decentralized organizations and Aragon organizations grow by Joel Monegro, who's also a partner at the fund. So in terms of services that the Aragon network provides, there's Aragon Court. And so Aragon Court is basically like fast and fair dispute resolution that happens purely on chain. Euros and rewards for settling those disputes and communities mitigate the risk of disputes by using Aragon agreements, which is basically the app that you can install into your into your DAO to leverage Aragon Court. So some of these disputes that you can think of are like things that are inherent to these online communities. For example, once you have an on-chain treasury, then people will want to obviously um, steal from it, right? And so then you have like a classic 51% uh, attack vulnerability in which a majority can actually um, get a bunch of funds from the minority uh, that are passive and maybe they are not paying attention. And so using Argon Court, the, this particular organization will be able to use write an agreement, um, an agreement in like plain English, you don't need a smart contract. And then that agreement uh, will serve as like the bylaws for the organization. And then if there is anything that uh, can be dispute, then any person can raise a dispute. Then that goes to our own court, and then euros take a look and rule um, on the on the winning party. And right now there are over 300 active euros and over 1.2 million dollars worth of ANT staked. And it is still very nasty. It is still very early, but the fact that we can create a fully decentralized court is mind blowing. And the amount of things that it allows is crazy because suddenly decentralized organizations are not constrained anymore to smart contracts. They can basically I do whatever you can encode in like human language or, or English. The other service that the Aragon network is working on is Aragon Chain. And so Aragon Chain is a proof of stake blockchain that is specifically tailored for DAOs. So the idea is that a lot of low risk activities can be processed on Aragon Chain. And so therefore like reducing transaction costs and increasing transaction speed. Um, I don't wanna position Aragon Chain as an Ethereum killer because it isn't. There are other like dozens of Ethereum killers out there if you want to check them out. But in the case of Aragon Chain, it isn't. Aragon Chain is specifically tailored towards DAOs. And so we actually encourage certain DAOs to even stay in Ethereum. Ethereum is great for, for many things. Like Ethereum is great if you want basically the most secure uh, smart contracts blockchain ever, but also you have to pay for it. So the way I compare this um, on a tweet storm recently is that Ethereum is like renting a studio in Manhattan. Like you are hyper connected, but you also pay a lot for a small studio. Um, in the other, on the other hand, Aragon Chain is more like having a house in the servers. Like you know, if you want to see your DeFi friends, you may have to actually like take your car and drive for an hour. So that is pretty slow. You're not very connected. You may miss out on stuff, but you may have a pool and a puppy. Um, so that is something that you know, kind of like DAOs can can reason about and, and think of. And then Aragon Chain obviously earns revenue when new transactions are created and validators and fees for validating those transactions. 
So recent developments that we've been working on. First of all, I want to say that Aragon is an open ecosystem. So like some of these things are not like worked on by the Aragon Association team. Um, in fact, most of them here are kind of like community initiatives. And so Aracred, for example, it is a very cool way for um, DAOs to solve the reputation problem. So like once you have a DAO, how do you how do you basically distribute the governance power on the DAO, or how do you work people and contributors? So SourceCred came with this idea of basically analyzing a bunch of places like GitHub, Discord, Discourse, to create like a page rank, like the same algorithm that Google uses for ranking different uh, results, but a page rank for contributions. And so you can basically very easily give um, rewards to your to your contributors by analyzing this huge social graph of their contributions. So that is very cool. You can plug an Aragon DAO to it um, and therefore start like having this nurturing this community of contributors. Then there's the app installer that is kind of like following on the governance Lego idea. So you can install Aragon apps very easily into a DAO. Then there's DAO profiles. So like we're trying to make it more social so that people can actually use join DAOs very easily. Um, custom frontends is coming soon. This is one of the most requested features from our users, basically uh, for developers to be able to create and embed Aragon into whatever they want. So like you can imagine that um, you will be able to, for example, create a Telegram bot that like abstracts away all the complexity, and then you can interact with your DAO via a Telegram bot, or even embed Aragon DAOs into Facebook groups, for example. And on the Aragon court side, we are running the precedence campaign. So basically like creating some precedence um, and stress testing the robustness of Aragon court. What's coming next? Well, again, there is so much going on um, and it's kind of an open ecosystem. So it is hard to like list everything that is going on. This is like a very short excerpt. There's Aragon agreements. So Aragon agreements are connecting Aragon court to Aragon organizations. So Aragon DAOs are going to be able to describe like their bylaws in basically plain English, and then those will be enforceable by Aragon court. And so, and so we're working on that. There is Aragon chain launch that, that's um, also going on. And the network phase three, that means basically transitioning full governance powers of the Aragon network to end holders, which is going to be quite a big event. In terms of the health of the ecosystem, right now, as I was saying, there are um, more than 1.4K Aragon DAOs out there, and they have more than $19 million secured by them. That is, I think, like another magnitude more than um, any other DAO platform. And then we've seen 18K total interactions uh, within those Aragon DAOs in the last 90 days, which is crazy. I think the, um, the whole idea that people have to go remote and they have a lot of time now, and a lot of people are losing their jobs, it's really contributing to a new kind of work. And this new kind of work, it's um, much more about communities, it's much more about the internet. And so um, I think that can really help um, in the next crisis and everything that um, is going to happen after the, the coronavirus outbreak. So um, but I said about building the tools so that that can happen and we have recently seen a huge uptick in usage. So, um, so that's happening. There is Aragon Court, as I would say, like more than 300 euros um, and a lot of stake AMT and also ANJ. And Aragon Chain will have a start yet because it's, it hasn't been launched. In terms of financial health, the Aragon Association, it is the Swiss entity that is funding the ecosystem. It holds $45 million in the treasury right now. And so based on the current, current um, network expenditure, that is um, basically like a decade worth of, of runway. So I'm very happy about that and happy about the Aragon Association uh, keeping funding the ecosystem and making sure that decentralized organizations and, and DAOs are a thing. In terms of communities using Aragon, we recently launched the Powered by Aragon campaign to feature some of them. Uh, there are a bunch of them and they are growing a lot. You have from like DeFi protocols like Aave to virtual worlds like Decentraland to DAOs that are helping fight coronavirus, like Help DAO or Collab19, to like other DeFi DAOs, Spy DAO. Um, and there are really a lot of organizations. You can check them in powerby.aragon.org. And actually, there's kind of a call to action here, like the pipeline of projects that are wanting to use Aragon. It's uh, a lot. We can handle it. So we're trying to get relationships with DAO development consultancies so we can uh, still support these projects. And that's it. 
Thanks for listening. And you can go to arawan.org to read more. Um, and I will invite Luis to, for a QA. and yeah, so thanks for the, the presentation. Uh, I guess, uh, first question. Um, so I guess we, we have this, this recent uh, kind of discussion on uh, the, the use case for Aragon Court. So I guess there, there is this kind of uh, outstanding dispute between Autark and Aragon, which we don't have to get into. Uh, but it does raise a, a good uh, kind of talking point on, you know, what, what does it mean by uh, Aragon Court is used for on-chain disputes? Can you kind of like flesh that out so people can understand, uh, you know, what, what that means? Yeah, for sure. So the idea with Aragon Court is to tackle certain problems that decentralized communities have. And so one of them, for example, like content moderation, right? Like how do you uh, moderate, for example, a list? Um, the other one that we are thinking of is like 51% attack protection, where like, you have 51% uh, participants in a DAO that may want to like withdraw all the fans and steal that from them and then screw all the minority participants. So those are like very simple cases because like they are very easy. Um, I don't want to say they are simple, but they are simpler than like full, building a decentralized um, court that handles everything that like a Swiss court, for example, can handle, right? And so those are the things that we're focusing on now. Aragon Court is very experimental. Like it launched a couple of months ago, and it still hasn't like fully opened its doors to the world. Uh, we're still running like a president's campaign, so it will just take time until you know, maybe even decades until it can replace like full fledged courts. So we have to start somewhere. Okay, makes sense. Um, so another question that we have from the audience: uh, What did you select uh, Cosmos for the base of Aragon Chain over other options, um, and what? Uh, did Cosmos offer as far as like technical benefits um, as the most like, is it the most viable Ethereum alternative? Like how did you guys think about that decision? Yeah, I think very important for us was full Ethereum compatibility. Cause like we've been building on Ethereum for um, 40 years already. So everything we have is based on, on Ethereum um, and Solidity. And so that was like the main reason. I really like Polkadot. I think it's like uh, in some ways it is superior technology wise. Um, in some ways Cosmos also excels and in this particular way, Cosmos really excels in terms of like just having drop in EVM compatibility. Sure. And so, now, so as far as like Aragon Chain, will, will an Aragon DAO be able to choose whether to process some of their transactions on Aragon Chain or um, on Ethereum? Yeah, that is going to be an interesting thing where you can basically, we have this concept called Aragon Agent, which basically is like the agent of the DAO for actions that happen outside of the DAO. So like the DAO can interact with DeFi protocols um, or stuff like that. And so we can take this in concept and apply it to like a multi-chain world where you have all the intra DAO stuff happening on Aragon chain, like very cheap transactions, very fast. And then you have your agent um, that does whatever the participants on Aragon chain decide and just does that on Ethereum. So like you can still interact with DeFi protocols. Um, we're like not targeting this for like the public testnet that we're re um, releasing soon, but it's going to be, um, I think, kind of like a killer app uh, because you'll be able to run a bunch of like very cheap, fast transactions on our own chain, but then still leverage some DeFi um, in interoperability on Ethereum. Gotcha. And to switch gears a, a bit, um, you mentioned that there's uh, you know more than 1,400 Aragon uh, DAOs right now uh, that hold about uh, like nineteen million dollars in value. Um, so, what what kind of use cases are you seeing? I guess there are probably some some larger examples, like I believe, uh, like Melon, for example, like the Melon DAO. Um, but yeah, just would like to hear you know some of the use cases you're seeing. Uh, if there's been an uptick uh, in activity recently with you know people uh, being prevented from uh, you know organizing in, in person, uh, be, be interesting to hear. Yeah, definitely. I think there's the case of like uh, kind of like big protocols that are decentralizing themselves. So like Melon is an example of that. They decentralize the governance completely. I think they were the first like DeFi protocol to do that. And then there is Decentraland. Decentraland runs like its entire like virtual world. Um, basically, it's governed by an Aragon DAO, which is like kind of mind blowing. It's a virtual world powered by like their community. And then um, and then there there's like the long tail of internet communities that are trying to like organize around Aragon. There are also like on the DeFi side, there's also like PyDAO. They're building basically uh, like different financial derivatives based on crypto, like a BTC plus plus, which is like kind of um, an index of like different versions of or a set of like different versions of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it is super exciting because like that use case, the DeFi use case, is obviously like exploding. And right now, like people need to actually decentralize these protocols, and so that's very exciting. 
But on the other hand, as well, we're seeing these communities that are kind of like this long tail of communities of people that just want to organize and have like a shared piggy bank, basically, uh, and kind of shared incentives and a shared common currency, which is a token. Jim, and then uh, last question uh, with the two minutes we have remaining. Uh, so you kind of mentioned this idea of ANT as a uh, kind of like store of value with the idea being, or the analogy given of comparing it to like a seat in uh, you know, the United States Senate, uh, be, an idea that um, you know, as the, the thing you're governing becomes more valuable, uh, that seat becomes uh, more uh, costly to attain. Um, so I just I think it'd be a good talking point to talk about uh, more broadly the different uh, value accrual um, and value capture mechanisms that uh, the ANC token has. Yeah, for sure. So the way we are trying to look at it right now is just uh, thinking how can the Argo network provide the best services to DAOs that then DAOs can use. And so we're trying to basically link A and T to the like growth and popularity um, of DAOs. So right now, like DAOs can use Argon Court, uh, DAOs will be used to um, will be able to use Argon Chain. And so basically, the way it works is that each of these platforms have their own work token. So Argon Court has A and J. You need A and J to become a juror in Argon Court. Um, Aragon Chain has ARA, you need ARA to become a validator. And then these tokens are linked to ANT via a bonding curve. So you need to basically stake um, a bunch of ANT uh, to get these different tokens. And so if there's more demand for these services, then there is more uh, demand for ANT and more ANT that gets locked away. And so as there are more services that are more compelling for DAOs, basically that creates like a circle where the more DAO demand there is, uh, the more ANT gets locked up, the more ANT gets locked up, uh, the more valuable these services become and their tokens because there's like bigger collateral in these bonding curves. And then we have like more capital to deploy uh, or the network has more capital to deploy to actually make us better. It's kind of like a very good virtuous cycle. And is there, this is like real quick, is there like any uh, like fees that uh, AMC would get from this increased activity? Uh, well, in the yeah, in the model we are thinking, actually, no, like there, there will be no tax. There would just be basically staking. So, like, it gets locked away. Um, I think that is very interesting because, like, with crypto systems, we can basically say, hey, no tax. Like, it's just like the more token that gets locked down, the better. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, at the event of this session, uh, where can people learn more about uh, yourself and Aragon? Aragon.org and Aragon.chat. All right. Thanks, Luis.